Hey everybody, I'm Robert Donovan. Welcome to this episode of Not Treconomics, and we have made it to part three of three in our little Star Trek warp bubble warp ship flyby project here, or warp bubble flyby project, I guess you could call it. And we are about to enter the final phase and do all of the compositing. So we will kill all that. And we, when we last left part two, if you haven't watched parts one and two first and you're just coming to this series now, you, you know, hit it on a YouTube search or a Google search somewhere, please go to the links below for parts one and part two before you do this. It'll make a whole lot more sense if you do. With that out of the way, let's do this. So we've got our scene rendered at frame 220, and I am going to go into the node editor. We're going to go to the scene compositor, We're going to click use nodes, We're going to click backdrop. And now we want to add a viewer node so we can see what we're doing. So do a control shift left click and that gets us a viewer node. Let's hit N to get rid of that properties panel. And the big thing here is we have this material index option on our render layers, which we got because we turned on material index and assigned pass indexes to or indices to all of our materials. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create masks and that's what this thing allows us to do. So we're going to go shift A and under converter we're going to select this ID mask node here. All right, now let's take the index MA value to the ID value for that and let's uh, control shift right click to go to the viewer. So this white is transparent, black is opaque, and if you look at the different path, by default, the entire scene is pass index zero. Pass index one for me was the bay lights, which you can barely see in this view. That's the ship lights. That's the gun lights. That's the engine exhaust. That's the engine bell. Let's hit V to get this fully into frame here. That's the Alcubi air lights. That's the cylinder background, and that's the white hole material at the very end of the cylinder. You could put effects on every one of these materials. For the purposes of this tutorial, um, I normally rarely do all of the stuff that I put pass indices on. I don't always put materials on them, but I like to have the option so I can experiment and play around a little bit. But for this one, I'm just going to do the engine exhaust, the cylinder streaky stars, the image texture, and the white hole. So we're going to need three masks to do that. So, and the way we make this, the way we make this workable is we have to add one more node to this. So if we do shift A, color, mix, add that in here. You put the mask, the ID mask on the factor. You take the original image into the bottom input here. And then you take this top input all the way to black. Okay, now let's go back and go over those indices again. Now, because white is transparent, you're letting all the image, the part of the image that's white come through, but everything else is masked out. So if we now go to six, there we have the Alcubi air lights and they're blue. The engine bell has the reflected uh, light from the engine exhaust. The engine exhaust was white because it's just so bright, and the green gun lights are there. So now you can see there's a little yellow tinge to the ship lights. So now you can see, and the blue, of course, on the bay lights. Now you can see all the colors coming through because now white is truly transparent because we've mixed it with this other image. So this gives us a basis on which we can add additional effects. Now we're going to need three of these, so let's uh, select this, shift select this, shift D, Shift D again. I'm going to take the output of the ID mask or the uh, I, and, uh, the uh, index MA value to this to the ID value, and we're going to take the original image down here. Original image down here. Okay, so now we've got the first one in the viewer. We want to do the first one is going to be the engine exhaust. We're going to just basically do some blur and fog glow. So go Shift A. Filter, Blur. We want to use Fast Gaussian Blur. We want to make it relative. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little better. We want X Aspect Correction, and I want to set the, uh, the uh, blur to about 6% for what we're doing here in both the X and Y. 
And then I want to add a bit of blur of uh, glare, which is fog glow in this case. We could do streaks, but fog glow works better. We'll set that to fog glow, drop that in there. And I have medium fog glow. I've got the mix on zero. I'm going to set the size up to nine, which gives us a nice rounded out uh, blur there, or a glare. And we're going to set the threshold down to 0.5-ish. Yeah, there we go. Makes it just look a little energetic coming out of that engine there. So that's going to be that. And now to get this to be into the rest of the scene, we need to use a color mix. But we're going to set it from mix to add before we drop it in here. And we're going to put this one on the bottom. And we're going to put the original image into the top input. So now we have the engine exhaust on top of the rest of the scene and it isn't affecting the rest of the scene. So let's move these up a little bit and we will just, you probably get the idea now, we're just going to do that again. For this one we want the pass index to be 7 because we're going to just put a little fog glow on the streaky stars in the back here. We don't want to blur it so much, but we do want a little bit of glow coming off this thing. So let's go ahead and control shift left click to get us into the viewer node here. Shift A, filter glare, fog glow for this. Oh, and by the way, if you want to do lens flares, those are ghosts, but this ain't a J.J. Abrams film. All right, we're going to set the size to nine. And that'll take that up nicely. We're going to knock the threshold down just to like 0.8, just to really kind of make it pop a little bit more. And that will be all we do for that. We will just duplicate this Shift D to duplicate this. Drop it in here. We will put this on the bottom image input. And we will put the image output from this first add node over here. So now we've got glow on all of our bright bits in the warp bubble. And then finally, we are going to add a little bit of fog glow to the, which is actually getting a little fog glow now, but we're going to get uh, more fog glow on this white hole. So let's set that to pass index 8, like that. Shift, Control, left click. And we want blur and fog glow again. So let's do filter, blur, we want this to be fast Gaussian. We want this to be relative. We want X aspect correction. Here we only want about 3% blur on the X and the Y. And that looks a little weird, but it's okay. Once we add the fog glow to it, it'll look just fine. We will switch that to fog glow like so. We will make this low quality fog. Boom. We will set the threshold down to, eh, I guess 0.8 is good enough there. We'll set the size up to 9. Duplicate the add node again. Drop it in here. This on the bottom. This on the top. So now we have this really, really energetic scene that looks pretty cool in my view. You could blur this, I suppose, if you absolutely felt the need. You could probably throw just a touch of glare. Uh, blur, rather, onto this. Let's go ahead and make this uh, fast Gaussian and relative X aspect correction and give this just like maybe 1% blur. Yeah, I guess that would work okay. You could you could play with that if you wanted to, uh, whatever, you, whatever you like, you know, maybe even 0.5. But there you go. So, you know, play with this, you know, play with this a little bit. See what you like. You know, if you come up with something you like, do it. If you don't, then don't. But there you go. We'll, we'll leave that little bit of blur in there. What the heck? All right, so that is that. So that takes care of all of the compositing effects that we need for traversing the warp bubble. The next step is to do the compositing effects we need for right as the ship comes out of the warp bubble and comes back into normal space. So we are not going to render this right here because we need to render a different frame. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the 3D view. 
Okay, frame 336. We are going to render this frame right here. So hit F12. Let's hit the escape key and go back to the node editor because I forgot to do one very important thing here. And that's take the output of this add node to the compositing node so that we will actually get this thing to do its thing. But we will go ahead then back to the 3D viewer. Okay, the render is complete, and you're seeing we have just come back into normal space about two or three tenths of a second ago, three thirtieths of a second ago, tenth of a second ago. The engines have just started powering up, and we are just out of the warp bubble. The camera has just emerged from the warp bubble. The ship did this about three frames before that. So what we need to do now is we need to get that lens distortion effect where we have the uh, Doppler distorted starlight that's going away and then the ship takes off at sublight speed. So let's go back into the node editor. And we're kind of done with all of these nodes, so I'm going to just fold these up here. Just roll these up on the... like so. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we now need to get the... use the lens distortion node to get our streaky stars for just a second or so as we're coming out of warp speed. So we're going to go ahead then and add a lens distortion node. So that's going to be distort lens distortion. Okay, now on frame one we want to hit I and keyframe both of those at zero. At frame 333, which is our trans, which is our just right before we go to white, Right there. We want to keyframe these at zero again. Okay, so we want to keyframe those at zero again at frame 333. And at frame 336, actually we'll make it 334. The heck with it. We'll take the distortion on frame 334. We will take the distortion to minus 0.99 and the dispersion up to 1 and keyframe both of those. You'll see what that looks like momentarily. And then on frame 260, so there, we want these back to zero. Alright, so we'll take these back to zero. Actually, whoops, wait a minute. Did those not, uh, I'm going to take these back to zero and keyframe them at zero. Okay, so basically at frame 334, we've got these things full on. And then as we go to frame, we'll just go a few frames ahead here, you'll see that this starts reducing down to zero. So we're at 260, and there we go. Okay, so that takes care of the distortion. The problem is, of course, that we've got the 60s tie-dyed shirt effect going on because we've got all the rainbowing here, and we want not to have that. So we are going to use a hue saturation value node and an RGB curves node to do that. So let's go ahead and add a, hue, a color hue saturation value node like this. Drop it in here. And on frame one, okay, we want to set the saturation to zero and the factor to zero and keyframe the factor. So hit I. Because with the factor at zero, nothing is happening here. Okay, we just have the same star field we had before. All right, so then we want to go to frame 233 again. And we want to hit the I key to create a keyframe to keep that at zero all the way to 233. And on 234, we want to set the factor to one, keyframe that. And now everything is going to just go white. There you are. And on 260, we will put the factor back down to zero. 
and keyframe that. So there we go, we get all our colors back, which is what we want. Now the next thing we want here is on frame 233 or 234 here, where this first goes into effect, we want to add the blue shifting back in. And it doesn't need to be the exact same color. You want it to be close, but you're in a period of transition, so it can be different. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a hue saturation, or not a hue, a RGB curves node. So RGB curves. I'm going to drop that in here. Now you can play with the contrast on this if you feel you must. I'm not going to mess with that. This is one of these things you can just kind of eyeball in. So I'm going to just mess with the reds here, take those down a bit. I'm going to take the greens down, not so much as the reds like that. And I'm going to set the blues up a little farther than I took the greens down. So there you are, and that's gonna, that'll do it there. That's, I'm not gonna do exact numbers. You can play with this all day. Just do something, just do it until you're happy with it. So there we have our blue shifting here. So now we want a little bit of blue enhancement on this all through the scene. So let's go to frame one. Now we're gonna take the factor here to point one, like this which is basically our scene with just a tiny little bit more blue added into it, which is fine. And we're going to hit the I to keyframe that. And again, as you probably have figured out on frame 233, we're going to keyframe that at 0.1 again. On frame 234, we're going to take this all the way to 1, and we're going to keyframe that. Alrighty, and on 265, so we'll take this from, on 265, we'll take this to zero and keyframe that. Oops, I'm sorry, not zero, point 0.1. And we'll replace the keyframe there. Okay, so we'll take that point 0.1, like that, on 265. We will also, with this, um, selected, we're going to go to the uh, graph editor, hit the home key, bring that thing into view, and let me see here, the, uh, what are we looking for here, we want RGB curves, compositing node tree, fault value factor, yes, that is that one right there on 265, we want to hit V and vector just to kind of make it keep the blue a little longer as the, the lens distortion and the saturation value are coming down. So that will be all we need to do for that. And so let's go back into the node editor here. So now we have all of that taken care of. So let's go ahead and move these a little bit out of the way here so we can see our Alcubier drive, which is still going at full strength, I do believe, unless I am mistaken. Let's select the ship, go to materials mode, Alcubier. No, it's down to two. Okay, so we already keyframed that. So it's already down to two. And by this time, the engines in the actual scene will be at full strength and fully blasting, and off we go. These will be looking very dim by comparison. It's just when we rendered this, they were still pretty strong. So there we have that. So that is that. Let's also, before I forget again, zoom out here, take the output of this to the compositing node so that it will actually render. Okay, folks, so that's how I did the sequence you saw at the beginning of this video and the other three videos in this series. All you have to do from here is click on the Render tab and click the Animation button. The only differences between what you'll see in that sequence and what we did here today are that I have added the fog glow and blur to the star background, the streaky stars background on the inside of the cylinder, the cylinder material itself, and I have also added the Alcubierre lights, which were dark in the videos that I used to promote this tutorial. This is not the only way to do this, and that's going to be version 2. Haven't decided when that's coming out yet because, a couple of announcements here, 
I have gotten a new computer and I'm setting up a render farm, so that's going to take a little bit of doing. I want to get the social media episode, the social media introduction episode, and the building a sane tax system episode out before tax time rolls around here in the United States. And I am going to be researching some online job opportunities for the Human Capital series in this channel. And there may be about four to six weeks uh, from that point where I don't do any content because I'm actually going to be doing these jobs to see if they're any good. Could take a lot less than four to six weeks if they all turn out to be scams. So I will let you know how that goes. In the meantime, welcome to my new subscribers. I am always grateful that anyone is interested in what I have to say. Thanks a lot for watching and may the balance of your day be awesome.